Three, two, one. Hey, um, in this class today, <coughs> we're going to try and cover buying land. This is one of the most favorite topics for those who are hunting land for uh, achieving their farming dream. So I'm going to start with my own personal experience. It's really, really important to know why you are buying a piece of land. For example, I bought a piece of land in the middle of pesticide zone. What I mean by that is, I bought 11 acres and around this, almost everybody had 500 acres of land and all of them were doing monoculture spraying pesticides. This was in Yuba City, California. And uh, I bought it um, in the year 2007, I believe. And I had to sell it within less than six months because I got really scared and I had to sell it. So it's very, very important that you understand why you are buying a piece of land and there are so many aspects to buying land. So I'm going to cover all this in this discussion. One of the first things to consider is the climate of the piece of land. For example, if you're going to buy, grow a specific set of crops that you are interested in, you think that you're good at, then you need to buy for that particular climate. So if the climate suits growing that particular crop, that is the place to buy. So that is one of the first things to look at. The other thing to look at is water. Is there sufficient water or are you going to depend on rainfall? Generally, I wouldn't recommend depending on rainfall. Okay. So if you are going to buy land next to a river, I would like you to check whether the um, places up, up the river are polluting the river because all that pollution is going to come down straight to you. So this is something very, very important for you to think about. The other uh, factors uh, such as uh, wild animals are very important. Wild animals, uh, mainly deer and uh, elephants, they really cause a lot of headache and monkeys. So a lot of wildlife acts prevent farmers from hurting these animals. So it's very, very important to protect your crops from these animals using techniques that actually don't hurt these animals. So that is something to consider. And uh, let's get into soil and water testing. Water and soil has to be tested before you actually buy the land. And uh, water testing, by water testing I mean you have to sample the water from a nearby farmer who has dug a bore well and uh, take it to the lab and make sure the water does not have excessive salts and it does not have heavy metals in them and the water tastes good. So after testing all this you have to drink the water also to find out you know if it tastes good and uh, that's very important to begin with. Otherwise, when you're growing crops, the water is going to deposit all kinds of salts on your topsoil. And then you have to constantly keep correcting the pH by employing bacteria that eat these salts. So this becomes a perennial problem for you if you end up buying land uh, with water that is very, very sal saline. So that is something to think about. <clears throat> then in the land, you have to do chemical testing. Because the previous farmers, let's say you are buying a virgin piece of land which was never used, then it's a good thing. But in general, if uh, you are buying land that was previously used by another farmer, then it's a good idea that you actually do chemical testing of the soil. Because the previous farmer could have been growing a specific monoculture where he would have deployed a specific set of uh, chemical fertilizers. And uh, we know that we can convert those lands to organic using specific techniques which I will cover later. But it is better that you find out what was dumped in that soil. Either demand to find out the history of the land or even if you know the history of the land, it's better to check uh, what is there in the soil. Excessive salts is a good indicator that a lot of fertilizers were used. Excessive heavy metals indicate that uh, probably sewage sludge was used. Some bad fertilizers were used and uh, water with heavy metals were used. So it's very, very important that you find these details and um, also check your neighbors, how many of them are spraying pesticides and what is the general wind direction most of the year <coughs> and whether we can build wind barriers such as lot of trees and shrubs combination that can prevent the wind from taking all the pesticides into your land. The other factors that I think are uh, nearness to markets. So if you buy land way too far away, this is a usual problem that a lot of people face. They have to find a trade-off between price of the land and where uh, they actually want to farm. A lot of people want to be near wildlife, near a place that is so nature-bound. 
but then they are way too far for them to ship the product at the right price. So this is a big catch. So you need to be very careful what is your intent. If you want to find a piece, uh, you know, place of peace, uh, full of nature and wildlife around you and fresh air, clean air, then it's better that you don't think about doing a commercial farm, instead you do a hobby farm. But if you want to sell your product and a lot of people have this dream that they want to create a small income so that they can quit their dead end job. This is something I have seen over and over again, a lot of people asking me, can I create sustainable income with farming? For those people, I recommend a 100 kilometer radius away from the city so that you can get the right price point and a good location far away and quiet where you can do your farming practice. And most important of all, I would like you to meet as many farmers as possible who are actually farming in the region where you want to potentially buy your land. Because there are labor issues, there are labor laws, there are labor unions, there are all kinds of difficulties in farming land. That is why I believe it's true that maybe 99 out of 100 farmers who really want to farm don't end up farming. They always end up having a second job to support their love for farming and they do farming mostly non-commercial and those who are actually farming also end up struggling because there are so many difficulties in farming so land is fundamental land choice is fundamental to your decision making so go ahead find a piece of land go meet the farmers who are farming near that land get your rice right price point and why don't you just go work in those lands for a few days to understand that area and that gives you a choice uh, a chance i'm sorry a chance to make better decision thank you